Something terrible has happened to precious little Lauren Key. Lauren had slipped and fallen. Deputy DA Craig Hum says during a court-ordered visitation, Lauren's father, Cameron Brown, takes the four-year-old hiking nearly a mile up to Inspiration Point, high above the Pacific Ocean in Southern California. The cliff wasn't just a straight drop into the ocean. There was a slope and there were projections of rock out from the top of the cliff. Brown says Lauren ran the entire way to this rocky ledge. The father says he glanced away for a split second, and when he looked back, all he saw were Lauren's little feet going over the edge, a terrifying 120 feet drop straight down to the ocean. He said he didn't see her when he looked over the edge of the cliff. What did the father do? Did he call for help? He ran down uh, to a beach uh, that was on the other side of the cliff, and he borrowed a cell phone to call 911. My daughter fell off the cliff in Palo Verde. OK, sir. Are you near her? Can you see her from where you are? No, I don't know. I haven't gone down and found her. I just found somebody with a phone. I called you first. Now I'm going to look. Wait a minute. The father hasn't even checked on his little girl? Rather than going to her body or to try and rescue her, he spent about four and a half minutes talking to the 911 operator. You'd think there would be panic or at least heartbreak in his voice. Not this dad. Does he know where he is? The sunbathing beach. Sunbathing beach? Yeah, I know where the new bathers go. You guys don't want to get dressed. <laughs> Sorry. As one witness described it, it was like he was ordering a pizza. Uh, there was no emotion, and all the while, his daughter is floating face down in the ocean, uh, and he's chatting on a cell phone and joking with the people at the beach. Brown eventually makes his way down the shoreline in search of little Lauren. It's been nearly 15 minutes since she slipped and fell. He spots her lifeless body floating face down in the water. Her little beautiful body was broken and battered and it, it wasn't anything that any parent should ever have to see or any parent would ever, in their worst nightmare, ever see. So the initial investigation or the initial call came in as an accident? Yes. Los Angeles County homicide detectives Danny Smith and Jeffrey Leslie don't usually respond to accidents. But something about Brown's 911 call and the location of Lauren's fall was troubling. There's no way that, that a kid should be out on that cliff. I've been out on that cliff. On a hunch, the detectives head to Inspiration Point to speak to Cameron Brown. I went to introduce myself to Mr. Brown, and I remember coming back to Danny and saying, I, I don't like this. I don't like it. He was so disconnected, it, uh, it just didn't feel right. I looked over at him, I said, that's the dad. And someone said, yeah, that, that's him. And I was struck by the absolute poker face, lack of emotion, and very um, nonchalant. Was he upset? Was he distraught? His child is dead. No. He was more concerned about his surfboard on top of his car. An hour away from Inspiration Point, Sarah Kimar and her new husband are worried their little Lauren is late coming home. We decided to drive up to where her father lived and we were on the phone to the police trying to find out if there was any accidents and we were directed to go to the nearest police station. When the police told you to go to the police station, is that all you knew as you were driving over there? That's all we knew. So when we got there, we were met by a detective. It was all quite a blur to me. They mentioned the word cliff and there had been a death and it involved Lauren, but I couldn't piece everything together. Um, I remember becoming hysterical. I was just cascaded into this emotional pain. I just remember wailing, heaving, no words were coming out. And as the police describe it, your reaction and the father's reaction could not have been more different on that day. I feel my reaction was what any parent, how they would react if they just heard the worst news of their life. 
But Cameron Brown's behavior is getting more bizarre by the minute. He showed no interest in what had happened. Uh, instead, he wanted to know who had won the presidential election. Maybe Brown was just in shock, but there was something the detectives, who were both fathers to kids Lauren's age, couldn't explain away. Why a father would take his four-year-old to such a dangerous place. When you saw the cliff, what did you think? Interestingly, Jeff and I are both afraid of heights. He would only go so far, and I'd only go a little bit further, and we were still at least 30 feet from where Cameron said that he took his daughter and sat on the edge of this cliff. So you as a dad, you look at this and you're saying, there's no way my four-year-old's gonna walk this no. willingly. No, we finally, we, we called uh, our SCB Special Enforcement Bureau and said, you know, we need um, some people up here with uh, rigged up and repelling gear. So wait a minute, you needed, you or you needed a team with repelling gear to get to where he says you they were sitting? Yes. Because you couldn't walk out there. We wouldn't walk out there. You know, perspective is everything. Here's how it all happened. Cameron parked on the other side of that point. Then he walked up to the point, went around this entire horseshoe and came up to this cliff with a four-year-old who he said was leading the way. By this point, what are you suspecting? I honestly didn't know. I'm just thinking it doesn't make sense. Did you believe Cameron's version of what happened on that cliff? It was very difficult to comprehend what he was saying is what happened. It was just such a bizarre death. When the detectives finally get a glimpse at little Lauren's body, it's like a punch in the stomach. She didn't have the injuries to support a slip and a fall. She would have had scrape marks on her hands, on her arms, on her face, uh, and she showed none of those injuries. So what happened to little Lauren on that cliff? She had to be propelled. Up next, the scene of the crime or an accident. Experts go back to reenact the fall. It's almost like the perfect place for something like that to happen if you don't want to be seen. Do you think he just pushed her? Do you think he dropped her? Based on the nature of her injuries and based on the force with which she would have had to have been thrown,